Hello and good morning. Let's take a look here. All right, so look, on this one right here, we don't really know that they're right triangles. So to do Pythagorean's theorem um, probably is not right. So if you look here, they're similar. And since they're similar, the ratio is going to be the same. So if you take the bottom over the bottom and reduce it, you get one half. So knowing that, if this is 6, then this one has to be 3 because it's half of 6. And by the same token, if this one is 5, then this one has to be twice as big, which is 10. So you don't have to try Pythagorean's theorem. Um, as a last resort, maybe so. But now we have everything we need just by using the ratio and similarity. So to find perimeter, you just add it all up. 9, 10, 11, 12. So the perimeter on the small one is 12. This one right here is 18 and 6, I think is 24. And if you reduce that, you get one half, which is the ratio in one dimension, which is perimeter. Look at this one right here. You need to separate them. So you have a small triangle, and you have a great big triangle. This one is x. This one is 5.9, or 5.9. Okay, this one is 12. The whole thing was 30. So 30 minus 12 is how much? Is that 18? I think it's 18. Okay? Now here's the trick here, so pay attention. This one right here is actually in feet, and this one is in feet. But here's the problem. This one is in inches. So there are 12 inches equals one foot. So you've got to convert that. So you have to say 5 and 9 out of 12 inches. Okay, so let me slide that up. So we separated it, and here's the problem. You have 9 inches here. These are feet. Okay, so 30 minus that 12. And actually, no. Let me take that back. This whole thing here is 30. Okay, there it is. So we really have everything we need. Okay, so let's set it up. So on this one right here, you got to do vertical over vertical. So that's going to be 5 feet. And 9 inches. So you got to put 9 out of 12 over x equals, keep the same direction, 12 over 30. You see, there are 9 inches in a foot, or rather 12 inches in a foot, but you have 9 inches, so it's 9 out of 12. Now you got to change that, so that's going to be 30 times that. 12 times 5 is 60, plus that 9 is going to be 69. Again, 12 times 5 is 60, plus that 9 makes 69 over 12, equals 12x, right here. Now you got to divide by 12. When you divide by 12, the 12 is actually on the bottom. So what you're going to have is 30 times 69 divided by 144. Let's see what that is. So 30 times 69 equals, divided by 144, equals. I get 14 and 3 eighths. 14.37. There it is, and that's how you do that, and this is feet. Okay, kind of tricky. Both of these were kind of tricky, okay? So just to recap, look here. They didn't tell us this one, and they didn't tell us this one. But the ratio, they're similar. It's 4 over 8, and 4 over 8 is 1 half. So if this is 6, this is half as big. If this is 5, this is twice as big. And then you add it all up. On this one right here, you have to be very careful because that's 5 feet 9 inches. And you have to change that to feet. 
So since there are 12 inches in a foot, you say 5 feet and 9 out of 12, just like that. And then you change it to a fraction. 5 times 12 is 60 plus 9, so that's 69 over 12. And there it is, and that's how you work those problems. Today you have this. Make sure you show work. I'll be around to check your work as well, okay? So copy that down. Make sure you draw diagrams. Make sure you're quiet and working. All right, let's move on now to college algebra. So for college algebra, I want all the formulas. Well, for the ellipse, remember, it's x squared plus y squared equals 1, but then you have the a squared and then the b squared. Now, the a squared is always the bigger one. So sometimes the a squared might be underneath the y. If it's underneath the y, then it would be elongated like this. If it's underneath the x, then it would be elongated like that, with the major axis on the x-axis. Okay? And then there's another formula, a squared minus b squared equals c squared. That gives you the focus. The eccentricity, which is the ovalness, is the focus divided by a. All right, let's work this one. To work this one right here, what you're going to do is divide everything by 20 because you want to get it equal to 1. So divide by 20, and this is going to give you x squared over 4. This gives you y squared over 5, and this gives you 1. Now at this point, the a squared is bigger right here. So you're going to say a squared equals 5, a equals the square root of 5, which is 2 point something. Then you're going to say b squared is equal to 4, b is equal to 2. Now, how does this look? Well, this is under the y, so you're going to go up 2 and a little bit more, down 2 and a little bit more. You're going to go over 2, which is the minor axis, like this, and your graph is going to be something like that. Okay? There it is, and that's how you graph that ellipse. Let's take a look at this one right here. This one right here is kind of tricky now because you're trying to make this a 1 here in front of the y. So you change that. What you do is kind of weird. You put x squared over 1, and then you change this to y squared over 1 over 9 equals 1. Now you might say, well, why is that so? Well, because y squared divided by 1 over 9, when you flip it, it becomes y squared times 9 over 1, which equals 9y squared. So this is exactly equal to that. Now, 1 ninth is certainly smaller than 1. So a squared is equal to 1, and b squared is equal to 1 ninth. And once you have that, you get a is equal to 1, right? The square root of 1 is 1. And then here you get b is equal to 1 third. Now you graph it. So on this one right here, um, the x is elongated along the x. So you're going to go over 1. This one, you're only going to go up a third and down a third. So this is going to look something like this. Now, you still have to compute the uh, foci. So the foci is going to be, let me think here, a squared minus b squared equals c squared. So the a squared is 1. The b squared is 1 ninth equals c squared. So c is going to be the square root of this. Well, 1 minus 1 ninth, you've got to change this to 9 over 9, um, so you have the same denominator, and that gives you 8 over 9. So whatever the square root of 8 over 9 is your foci. I don't know what that is. Let's see if we can do it. I'm going to say the square root, I'm going to use parentheses, 8 divided by 9, close parentheses, and press equals. I get something weird looking, and I get uh, 0.94. 0.94 is a little less than 1. And there it is. That's your foci. To find the eccentricity, <clears throat> what you're going to do, the eccentricity equals C over A. Well, C is the square root of 8 over 9, which was whatever I just said, divided by A, which is 1. So the eccentricity is going to be 0.94. All right. So let's try this one, which is a circle. Now pay attention to this. This is kind of a review here. All right, so what I would do first, if I had to do it, is probably move the 16 to the other side. So I'm going to say negative 16. 
I'm going to put my x's together. So x squared minus 10x plus y squared. At this point, I'm going to complete the square. So half a 10 is 5, and 5 squared is 25. So I want to add 25 here and add 25 here. When you do that, that becomes x minus 5, and you get this. And whatever that is, is 9. Okay? So remember I taught you opposite, opposite square root. Now this right here obviously must have been a 0 squared if you expand it out. So the circle or the center of the circle is going to be the opposite, which is 5, and the opposite, which is 0. So the graph of this circle is over 5, up 0, like that. The radius is uh, the square root of 9, which equals 3. So you're going to go over 3, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Scratch that one out. Then you're going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3. This way, 3, and down 3. When you do that, you should have a circle. And that's how you complete the square. And there it is, and that's what we're doing. Today's work is right here, but I may show you a little video first on completing the square with an ellipse. There we go. Have a good morning.